making a fraction of the money now that he's gotten involved in all of this charitable work. He's also locating kids or adults in America who are hopelessly deformed with birth defects. And he's got plastic surgeons whose income runs from two million dollars a year up who donate their services freely to give these kids a new face. Or there's my friend Josue Lopez Luna in Juarez, Mexico who got permission to use an old garbage dump. He cleaned it up, built a church there, built an orphanage and a Christian school. The orphans work in the basement one hour a day and they sell the things they make in America and bring in quite a bit of money. He has started a machine shop to teach Mexicans how to repair cars. Burn them also in the process. He's got an ironworks factory in town making grills for doors and windows which have to be barred there, as well as iron bedsteads. He's bought a farm to feed his children. He's got now a medical dispensary and a couple of rooms for childhood, a dental facility. All of this one man with a little bit of help from some of us. And Josue was a big family. His oldest son is a doctor and is helping in medical work. Says, my sons and I, we're going to capture Juarez for Jesus Christ. Then the province, then Mexico. Maybe not in my generation, but in time we're going to do so. Now this is how Christ works through people. Independent activities that this or that Christian creates. And Josue is creating a host of activities where other people catch the vision and are doing the same kind of work. This is one of the things about it. Our Lord says, Go ye, make disciples of all nations, teaching them all things that I have commanded you. Don't create super churches or super states. Go ye. It's up to us. Family is the basic government in God's sight. Remember this. The tithe was paid to the Levites and it was used basically for health, education, and welfare. And a tithe of the tithe was paid to the church or for worship. In other words, God said the house of worship is the armory where you get the ammunition. And then you go out and wage war in my name against the powers of darkness. And what about the state? Numbers 11 tells us it's half a shekel per person. Verses 11 and chapter 30, 11 through 13. And uh, that half a shekel is all they were permitted for government. Nothing more. Excuse me, it was Exodus rather than numbers. Exodus 30, 11 through 16. Atonement money it is called a covering, but that was a tax. The Jews were collecting it well into the Middle Ages for government. For government. That was all. So was God saying power is going to be centralized in the state or in the church? No. 
he was saying, in you, in you, 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 in what you do, you are to be my power center in this world. That's what Christian Reconstruction is about. Now it is an interesting fact that uh, in the trials I've been in since the 70s of Christian schools and homeschoolers, when the uh, state goes after somebody that looks around for the poorest Christian school you can see, or the poorest example of homeschooling you can see, they try to find one that has just started, for example, and is in a one room. Uh, church with a basement and the kids are meeting in the basement. The first big case was 18 all in one classroom grades, one through eight. They said, oh boy, this is made to order. They put them through compulsory testing. They tested out two years ahead of all the public school students. The worst homeschoolers they find, they test out two years ahead of Christian school students. Why? Well, who's more concerned about children than a parent? And if a parent is interested enough to educate his children, you can be sure that mother is not somebody the kids can get around. <laughs> They try, she'll walk them one. I know one very fine couple who have a Christian school, they have seven children, and I expect to hear before long that they're expecting their eight. At any rate, they have a room in the basement that Jean has fixed up as a classroom. And when they walk into that classroom, they don't say, Mom, she's Mrs. Newman. And uh, if Gene steps in, if he's not traveling on that day, he's Mr. Newman. Those kids are smart. Nobody dares touch them because they can make any child a public school book like an ignoramus. But the family is God's ordained family. The family was the first institution he created back in paradise. So the future of Christian reconstruction is in your hands. You are the ones who hold the key to the future. You have to take power back. Control of children, control of property, control of inheritance, control of welfare, and control of education. There's only one basic power that is not given to the family. The death penalty. That's why Adam and Eve could not execute Cain. Every other great power in society is given to men. You are God's basic governmental power. And you're going to change society. As you educate your children in a Christian school or in a home school, And as you control your property by getting out of debt, staying out of debt, fighting against status taxation, as Christians take over welfare, we're the only ones who can administer it sensibly. And we're the only ones who recognize that it is something that is an act of grace, not a right. A friend of mine in a depressed area started 
a food and clothing giveaway program at his Christian school. And they advertised in the paper that the poor and needy could come and be helped. He went to grocery wholesalers and damaged cartons and cases and other things. He got the same with clothiers, what they couldn't sell and didn't want. What did he do? He had, was there to give it out. But you know, a lot of people, when they came and saw it was a church, walked away angrily. They said, I don't want charity. It's my right to have these things. You see, that's the evil mentality we create. But things are happening. I have a good friend in Washington. He's a black and a lawyer. And uh, he's as fanatical and conservative as you could hope to find. And Jay told me when he moved to Washington, the first day he drove into his office, He passed Goodwill store, great big two, three story building. The roof had caved in and the place was closed. So he inquired about it. He found that it was bankrupt, going into court, 600,000 in debt, no assets, except a building where the roof had caved in. So he said, can I have it if I take over all the debts? They said, it's yours. Well, in no time at all, he had that working, hiring 200 people, a warehouse full of clothes and food to give out to the needy, and a file by his desk of jobs available for anyone who wanted to work. He said, I always have more jobs than I have at them. So he was so good at it, the Salvation Army asked him to take over and manage their things. And he's doing that on the side. And then an organization for the blind asked him to take over. And he's doing that. One politician told me, he said, it's something nobody will print anything about, but Jay Parker is doing more good with his private welfare program than the federal government here in Washington, D.C. In New York City, the Salvation Army is doing more good than the federal government. It's getting nothing but harassment from the city and from the federal government. But you see, Christians are taking back government from the state. This is happening all over the country. All over the country. There's a woman from my hometown. I didn't know her when I was growing up because she was, I don't think she was born yet. I've come to know her since. And uh, about 15 years ago, she got saved. And uh, she asked the minister, what am I supposed to do now? Well, you come to church morning and evening, you come to prayer meeting, and you read your Bible, and you have that with the motion. But what else? What am I supposed to do? Well, that takes care of it. Be a good mother. Be a good wife. So she sat down and read her Bible from cover to cover to find out what she was supposed to do. After all, she told me, this is my instruction book. 
that comes from the builder, the builder's manual. He